One of my favorite things, one of my hidden treasures that I'm about to share with the world, wasabi crab mac and cheese. It's the type of mac and cheese that will be dancing on Soul Train. <laughs> we live, we lit, we going. Back in the building. Oh look, it's sauce time. We throw that butter in. We're gonna let this melt. You just wanted to have a delicate kick, a little accent of wasabi. That's a fair amount. This is an infusion process. The last time I made crab meat macaroni and cheese, I was at a close friend of mine's house and he lives close to a sushi place that we love. And it was either I cook crab meat mac and cheese or we get sushi. So just the fact sushi was in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, let me throw some wasabi in the crab meat mac and cheese. And now we're here. Damn, just this wasabi and butter is just permeating in the atmosphere right now. It smells amazing. I'm gonna add some flour to this. I'm gonna thicken it up a little bit. See, now we have like a beautiful buttery, wasabi-esque paste. I'm gonna add some milk to this. And here we go, whisking away. Make sure nothing burns, make sure nothing gets stuck to the pan. Looks like this boiling water is ready. We're gonna use shells because I'm incorporating crab meat. I figure we keep it ocean oriented. You know, aquatic motion. It says on the box about 11 minutes. We're gonna go nine because we're gonna continue to cook this when we bake it in the oven. Time for more milk. You know, you gotta keep whisking because it gets crazy. With lack of whisking, this starts to stick together and cakes up and that's not how we want it. We need this smooth spread across evenly. I'm gonna drop some Asiago in here. I am gonna add more milk to it too. Wow, what a beautiful smell. Oh look, more cheese. We have a sharp white cheddar. They're both good, flavorful. They're not overpowering. Like, you don't wanna drop a Jarlsberg in here or something, because that'll just throw it off. When in doubt on how much cheese to use, the answer is a lot. But feel free to alter my recipes. At the end of the day, life's about changing things. So if you wanna use another cheese, use another cheese. Just don't use yellow American, I hate that. Please. And we're gonna give it a peppery kick. Woo! I'm drinking a mean orange, you know? I'm kinda big on orange wines, like. That might be my type of choice. White, red, rose, no, orange. I'm trying to fight a bull. I don't know if that's exactly how they do it, but that's not the type of rush I'm into. This will be a good gift. Woo! By now the steam has ruined the interior of my watch. <laughs> Looks like this is ready. Now we want to shock the pasta. Shock the pasta. Shock the pasta. It's in shock right now. Oh look, it's sink shells. Crab meat. I know certain restaurants where they still don't do seafood and cheese, but this is the New Testament. We do things a little different now. Crab is actually my favorite crustacean, despite popular belief. Even at a spot that has a lobster roll, you know if they make a good lobster roll, they make a better crab roll. Crab is just the superior crustacean, so that's what I'm here doing. I may not use it all. I may save a little on the side for myself. Only seasoning needed in this recipe, Old Bay. We want the Old Bay to hit the crab directly, which is why I didn't put it in the sauce because there's a bond between crab and Old Bay and we're not gonna dilute that with sauce of any sort. It needs to stick to the crab, stick to the shells. Who am I kidding? I'm not saving any crab. As perfect as this looks, I feel like something's missing. Splash! Oh, that's amazing. We have the best cheese sauce you've ever seen in your life. Look at that. <laughs> and you could just smell that wasabi, the blend of these two cheeses. Make sure every little piece of crab meat and every shell 
is kissed with the right amount of cheese. We're gonna leave this in the oven for 20, 25 minutes. 425 is perfect. <laughs> oh man, yo, this is so crazy. But there's still levels to this, so we're gonna start putting the rest of the cheese on top to make an amazing crust. There's been several times when I'm in the kitchen and I do this recipe and I think, am I gonna go penko or am I going traditional? Today, we're going both. Let's start with traditional. Just to give it an extra crunch on top, it separates it from a non-baked macaroni and cheese. And then we're going panko. Panko gives it a really special, crispy crunch on top. And I kind of feel since this is wasabi related, panko's straight out of Japan. You know, we're gonna keep going with the theme here. You can't neglect the corners. At the end of the day, everything always goes right back to the corner. Now I'm gonna put this back in the oven. I say about 10 minutes. We just get this crispy, pull it out, let it sit for a minute. Perfection. Look at it bubbling. Look at the texture, the complexity, the magnificence. Asiago, wasabi, and Old Bay hit me in the face. Like, who's ever smelled that combination before? 10 minutes later, we let everything cool off and solidify. Truth be told, I wish I could put birthday candles in this because this is better than any cake I ever received. I'm gonna go right to the center, right to the belly of the beast. It's outrageous. It should be outlawed. This is the type of dish that could start and end a war. The wasabi gives it the kick that it needs. It's perfect, it's a perfect blend, but you know, don't trust me. Delve in for yourself. For the recipe, click the link below. <laughs> You're laughing, this is a serious process. I mean, it may look crazy. A man in a colorful sweater with a little spoon in his hand, but yo, I know, I know what I'm doing.